Good morning. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, and we're here once again. Back is the incredible Jesus the Christ, Holy Spirit, God, working in the lives of every single believer and every single person who puts their hope and their trust in what he's doing and how he's doing it. Amen. Whether or not we understand his way of doing things, because remember the word says his ways are not like our ways. So therefore, sometimes we don't understand, but trusting in the living, holy, righteous, loving God is worth doing, not even when you don't understand how or why he's doing the thing. Amen. And I don't know anybody out there that's listening or watching that does not need some kind of covering, some kind of direction, some kind of guidance from God, some kind of protection. And today we're talking about the covering of God, how God covers us. Amen. The plans of the enemy are totally opposite than the plans of God over our lives. But God could use, he has knowledge of what the enemy is trying to do in our lives. He has knowledge of that. He understands and he knows what's going to happen if we don't follow his direction or if we don't go under his covering. Because how many people know that when it rains, it pours. And the Bible says that when it rains, it rains on the just and the unjust, on the, the sinner and on the saint. When it rains, pretty much everybody gets wet unless you have the proper protection so that way you stay dry and you stay afloat and you stay alive and you stay covered. The covering of God. What area in your life do you yourself, you right now, need God's protection? And right there, you already know that you could fit in that category of God's protection. You need his protection. I need his protection. Our kids need his protection. Our leaders need his protection. Our minds physically, emotionally, and spiritually, we need the covering of God in our lives. Amen. And there's someone in the Bible, there's many people in the Bible, but we're going to be talking about the one character in the Bible that has a lot of impact. Amen. That has impact so many lives. And from the Old Testament, there's a character in there. Amen. And we can see how God had covered him or protected him from the very beginning when he was born all the way through his life. And although he had said some things to God and he had did some things wrong. Amen. Uh, if it wasn't for the grace of God, God would have stopped him. But God continued to use this man of God. Amen. Um, for a purpose and a plan and a reason. Amen. And that person, I'll leave you in suspense. Right. We're going to discuss when we come back. But we're going to go into Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 5. Proverbs 30, verse number 5. Amen. So we could start it off with scripture. Amen. Because if it's not the word of God, then it's not really worth listening to. Or it's not really worth hanging out with me for the time for a morning devo if we're not going to bring word. Amen. And the word of God is powerful. The word of God is alive. Brother Ricky, God bless you, my friend and my bro. Welcome to the morning devo. It's good to see you. Amen. I hope you're blessed today. So let's get into it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, anything that you have that you want to share publicly, leave it on the live stream, leave it in the live chat, go to live.soulwinners with a Z.org. Amen. There's a place where you could connect with us there. And also you can request prayer. There's a button. And if you want things to be privatized, I understand and I respect that. Amen. You could always inbox me on any social media platform that you're watching or listening from. Amen. From the podcast, there should be a way to connect with me um, through whatever platform you're connecting or listening to from listening from right now. Amen. And I respect people's privacy. So if you want things not to be seen by the public, you just want um, things to be seen between my eyes and your eyes, you could go in the background or you could always email me at DJ Sam Rock at soulwinners with a Z.org and I'll get back to you as soon as I see your email. Amen. So any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests all through the time that we have, whether or whether or not I'm live or not, don't hesitate. Amen. Um, I'm harmless. I, 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 I promise you there's not going to be no debate, not going to be no argument. If we disagree on something, I like to learn. Um, I, I'm on a learning uh, lifestyle, right? I, I like to learn, amen, and I hope you like to learn too. And what God is doing, amen, he's teaching us and directing us. He has a purpose for us. He has a plan for us. We matter to God. Isn't that something? Amen. And by his grace, by his mercy, because of his love, amen, and by his covering, because of his covering, we're here today. 
A lot of people don't believe that. A lot of people just think that, oh, I have a gun in my home. That's why I'm protected. Or I, I have, you know, some people um, that I hang around that protects me. Yeah, that could be true. Amen. But ultimately, who gets the credit for covering me and covering you through the roughest times in our lives? God should get all that credit because he's the God who covers us. The covering of God, whatever you're in your life, do you need God's protection? We'll be in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. And then we're going to dive into another scripture. Amen. And also um, try to see in the Bible um, this man of God that God protected since he was born. Everything was not supposed to go according to how um, his family or how it was planned out for him accordingly. Amen. And the enemy was trying to do something to this man, but God was with this man of God. Amen. And he's with us. Emmanuel, God with us. So Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for protecting us, guiding us, guarding us, keeping us safe wherever we find ourselves, whether we're outside or we're in prison or in a, a, a war a war zone, or in politics, um, wherever you find us, Lord God, thank you for covering us, protecting us, amen, and bringing us out of these things that we need not be in. I thank you, Lord God, for the power of prayer. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. I thank you for your blood that you spilled, that you shed for sinners to be saved and to be transformed. And we recognize, and I recognize your power. I recognize your love. I recognize your grace, your mercy over every single one of us. I thank you, Lord God, that every single person that's connecting now or will connect later or are watching now or listening later will find the blessing in your word. And they will find the covering and your protection because of your power and your love and your your just just your consistency for you're the most consistent. You're the everlasting, consistent God that po- the powers over everything. And you're the most powerful being, Lord God. And because you are the most powerful being, we take refuge in you. We hide under the shelter of your wings. We hide in your presence. And we know that we are guarded, guided, and we are totally 100% safe when we're in your presence. No harm could come to us. No weapon forged against us will prosper because we belong to your kingdom and we are your sons and daughters. I pray for every single person outside of the kingdom of God right now that thinks that there's no way they could be saved or thinks that there's no way they could get into God's covering. I pray against that mindset and I pray they will repent, turn from their wickedness and turn to your righteousness and that you soften every hard heart, that every heart that's hardened because of this world, because of the situation, because of family, for whatever reason, Lord God, that you soften those hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit and that they would come into the light and they would come into the kingdom of God and that, Lord God, that you will have your will over their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So let's take 60 seconds to share this out with as many people that come to mind. If you know someone right now that does not have social media and they're not on social media like that, send them straight to the website live.somewinnerswithaz.org. And when we come back, we'll be in Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 5. I'll be right back. Behind the ball in those 60 seconds, I can never get used to that so fast. 
Let's go to Proverbs verse chapter 30, verse number 5. The Word of God says, Every word of God is tested and refined. Everything. So, you know, have you ever been pitched something, a product that somebody's selling to you or offering to you? And they usually say, look, this is tested, tried and tested. Amen. So we know it works. We know the program works. We know um, the product is good. We know it would benefit you. Well, every word of God is tested and refined like silver. Amen. So it's tested. It works. It's refined. Amen. God's word is tested by God to perform what his word says it would perform in your life. He is a shield to those. And listen to this. Not to those who don't trust him, but he is a shield to those who trust and take refuge in him. So a lot of people are going around saying, why is God allowing these bad things to happen to good people? First of all, according to scripture, there is no good person. The only good person that ever lived and ever will live is Jesus, and he is God. Only God is good, number one. Number two, why would you want protection from this God that you're not trusting, that you're not putting your life, you know, trusting him with your life, and you're not taking refuge in him? So you're looking at him and saying, why would you, God, the one who I don't trust, the one who I don't take refuge in, the one who I don't believe in, why are you allowing bad things to happen to good people? And you're not even in his word. You're not even um, under him. You're not even, you know, allowing him to be your shield. I used to do the same thing. That's why I'm saying it. I used to do the same thing. I used to be like, come on, God, why are you allowing this to happen um, to my friend, he's such a good person. To her, she's such a good girl. To him, he's such a good guy. Um, why are you allowing all this evil? How come you're not protecting me? And all this other stuff. I had all these thoughts and all these ideas about this God that I did not trust. A lot of people don't trust God, but they're trying to you know, punish God with their words. They're trying to um, accuse him of not being there for them. And they don't even trust him or believe in him. But every word of God is tested and refined. Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 5. He is a shield to those who trust and take refuge in him. So I would plead with you. Trust in God. Take refuge in him. And you'll see the covering of God over your life. Brother Robbie, God bless. Amen. Good morning. God bless you, my friend and my bro. It's good to see you on the morning, Devo. So let me take you quick because I don't have a lot of time. To someone in the Bible that you probably saw a movie about, you heard about, you read about, amen? Very popular character, very popular man of God in the scriptures. Ready? His name is Moses. Moses, the one who's known most popularly for telling uh, Pharaoh to let my people go, amen? This man, since birth, God protected him since birth. If you know the story of what this man Moses went through since he was born, you have to admit that the covering of God, the protection of God was all with him all through his life. It's in Exodus chapter 2 if you want to read it for yourself. But I'm just going to give you a background on this. When he was just a little boy, he was hidden because Pharaoh had given an order in the previous chapter, Exodus chapter 1, to kill Hebrew boys who were born and only allow the girls to live. Can you imagine that? This Pharaoh, filled with all kind of evil in his mind and his heart, was asking or sent a decree or, or you know, an edict to kill every boy that was born and leave the girls, let them live. Why would he do that? Because maybe he felt threatened of a man that would come from the ashes and rise up to some kind of authority or to take some kind of courage to come against his rule. Could have been that, right? Amen. It could have been that. Amen. You're very welcome, my bro. God bless you and your family as well. So God took care of Moses. And God will take care of me and God will take care of you no matter what Pharaoh or no matter what enemy is trying to do in your life. Or to your life. God took care of Moses and protected him. Because he had been born for a purpose. 
to deliver his people from slavery and guide them to the promised land. Amen. That's a word all by itself. God calls unqualified people. He'll qualify the unqualified, unqualified people. Amen. To use us. Amen. I mean, I'm unqualified, right? According to the standards of this world to do what I'm doing right now, even the church, religious people, uh, established people, mega churches or whatever, evangelists, apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, um, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever they have titles on, they might think that I'm unqualified to do what I'm doing. But God will take the unqualified according to this world and qualify those because we're born with a purpose. And that purpose purpose is given by God. Amen. I know I can make up a purpose, but that's I'll probably miss the mark. Amen. Right? If it's not God's purpose over my life, then I'll be wasting my time or on a rabbit wheel or a hamster wheel, I should say, wasting my time trying to do something that God didn't call me to do. And that could happen. Amen. If we're not careful and we don't know the will of God over our lives. Sister Joyce, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the morning Devo. Yes, praise the Lord. It's good to see you, my sister, my friend. Amen and amen. So whatever your situation is right now that you might be thinking, there's no way I could get out of this. There's no way I'm going to live past this. Amen. You ever felt that way? You ever felt like, man, this is so bad. This thing is so bad happening right now in my life that there's no way I'm going to get through it. I'm raising my hand. If I could raise both hands, I have this tablet in my other hand. I can't do it. But if I could raise both my hands, I would. I've been in those situations a lot. Thinking that that was it for me. But God had a purpose and a plan. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. Your life... You came out of a lot of life-threatening things. You're alive. You came out of a lot of sickness and disease. You're alive. You came out of a lot of situations where you should not be alive right now. Is because God covered you. Surely it's not the devil. The devil would have no reason to protect you. The devil will have no reason um, to, you know, push you to Jesus. Amen. He his his idea of a good time is to kill, steal, and destroy us. That's what the the devil thrives off of. That's how he gets his, you know, uh, spiritual high, if you want to call it like that. He doesn't want anything good for his, uh, for God's creation. He doesn't want good for anyone. He hates his very own. And I believe he hates his very own self. Amen. He must be thinking, why did I do that thing in heaven? Why did I fill my heart with all this envy or whatever? Now there's no turning back. There's no redemption for him, no redemption for his demons, no redemption. So if you're on that side of things, you're on the losing team. I pray in the name of Jesus that you come out of that losing team and come into the winning team of God, the kingdom of God, where there's light, where there's hope, where there's liberty, where there's freedom, where there's, where there's deliverance, where there's power, where there's authority, amen, and where there's protection, true protection, and the covering of God could be over your life. So whatever situation, I don't know what situation you're in, trust me, I don't know. I don't flow in that kind of prophetic way, amen, unless God allows me to have that window of prophetic ways. If you tell me, um, we introduce ourselves, and you tell me you're going through something, if God gives me the insight of what you're going through, so be it. But if not, I'm not claiming to be a prophet, but God used me to prophesy, and God could use you to prophesy too. Um, And a sure way that you know you're prophesying is when you read the Word of God over your life, over your situation, over somebody else's situation. When you see a promise, you are prophesied. So if you're going through something and you're listening or you're watching, it's because God has already taken care of you. Can you imagine that if you had not been protected by God in the situations where you needed the protection most, you would be you wouldn't be here. Imagine that. Think about that. You wouldn't be here. The fact that you're here with us and the fact that you're alive and the fact that you can live another day and the fact that you can live to talk about it and testify of God's protection of your life is evidence that you're under God's covering. Oh, not me, Sam. I'm not even in, in church like that. I'm not talking about church or oh, I'm not a religion, uh, a religious person. Like that. I'm not talking about religion. Oh, you know what? You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about the covering of God over your life and over my life. Amen. Where in the scripture does it say that we have to be perfect, that we have to go to church religiously, and that we have to be a religious person to receive the covering of God? You won't find it. A lot of people think 
that the building and the established church and the the structure that you go to to worship God has some kind of protection. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who love him. Amen. So the protection we do have in those buildings is the angel of the Lord. Angels surrounding the gathering place. Amen. I believe that 100%. Because I believe every time the doors open of your church and of my church. Amen. There's demons, demonic entities. Um, people who are filled with all kind of evil spirits that are trying to destroy, distract, um, and manipulate but the angels of the Lord that encamp around those who love him, amen, are more, way more powerful than those demons, amen. Yes, they could come in, but they can't stay. Yes, they could distract us, but there will be peace. Yes, they could try to discourage us, but we lift each other up in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus. We don't stay down. The Bible is clear. You can't keep a good man down. They try to, you know, make an example of Jesus on the cross and say that he was going to die and stay dead. Can't keep a good man down. The only good man that ever lived was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he proved it. Three days later, he rose from the grave. Amen. And the rest is history. He's still alive and he's coming back. Because he had a purpose. He was born that way. Amen. Even though he was eternally alive before he was born on this earth. Jesus is the only man that in history that was alive before he was born. Try to figure that out. That's because it's a God thing. So... There's a purpose that God wants to accomplish in your life. And if you don't know that, if you don't think so, think about all the times God was there for you, protected you, guided you, guarded you. Amen. Got you through some hard times. If you had no purpose, then God will leave you in those hard times. He will leave you in that situation. He would abandon you. But the word of God says he would never abandon us. He would never put us to shame. Amen. He would never leave us nor forsake us. So he's with us. And if God is with us, who or what can be against us? The covering of God. Where in your life do you need God's protection? Think about it. I need his protection daily. I pray for protection daily over me and my family, over my church family, over my friends, over every brother and sister in Christ, over my enemies. We all need God's protection. Amen. A lot of times I'm praying that God, you will protect me from them. In other words, people that are against the Lord. Amen. To keep me at peace. Amen. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody out there because my old man would try to rise up and want to do what the old man would want to do. But I pray against the old man and I pray that the newness of God, the new man that God created in my life will respond before the old man could ever respond. That's a prayer that I pray very often. Amen. Because very often I'm challenged. Amen. In my life. What about you? So God wants to fulfill his promises. Very important. His promises. And because he wants to uh, fulfill his promises in your life, all we have to do is trust in the promise. I mean, how simple is that? Because he wants to show that if he promised me or if he promised you something, he wants to show the people who are outside of the kingdom that there is a God who we trust that they um, have the uh, opportunity to trust as well as long as they put their faith and trust and be in the guidance and the covering of God. Let me give you another scripture. I want to leave you there. Psalms 91, verse number four. Psalm 91, if you read that whole psalm, there's protection and covering in every single area. God didn't leave anything out. Everything in Psalm 91 will have you know that God has us covered from A to Z. Amen. Psalms 91, verse number four. He, God, will cover you and completely, see what I mean? God don't leave anything, no stone unturned. He doesn't forget anything. He doesn't miss anything. He knows everything. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings, you will find refuge. There goes that word refuge again. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. Tell me who wants to fight that. The enemy, he's defeated. You know who wants to fight that? Our own evil, sinful flesh desires that want us to get out of the covering of God. Those desires that want us to stay away from God's kingdom, God's people, God's word, God's covering. Our flesh doesn't want us to pray. 
Our flesh doesn't want us to excel. Our flesh wants us to stay lazy. Our flesh wants to follow the sauce of this world system. But God, if you trust in him and you put your, your faith and hope in the Lord, he will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. Right now, as I'm saying this, I'm repeating this scripture. There's demons trying to distract everybody now. It was, no, don't, don't get that truth. Don't listen to Brother Sam. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But God knows exactly what he's talking about. Whatever God says, he means, and he means what he says. He, God, will cover you, my brother. Cover you, my sister. Cover you, all my enemies. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions and under his wings. Under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. Ain't nothing could break through that shield. You know, when this is not the Marvel comics, it's not DC comics, no um, villain, no, uh, you know, tyrant or no powerful villain can break the shield of God or tear down the wall of God. Amen. This is not fantasy. This is not, you know, mythology. This is not a movie. This is real life scripture. A breathing, living, holy, righteous God. Amen. Is speaking to us and letting us know. Ain't nothing can happen to you unless he allows something to happen to you. And if he allows something bad to happen, according to how what we think bad is, it's for a greater purpose and a reason. And he'll get the glory. Amen. And you won't understand it. I won't understand it sometimes, but he will get the glory. Amen. And something greater will happen. Through, haven't you noticed that every time there's been a major tragedy, at least in, in the United States, but we could see or in the world, God has sent his people to show up in those tragedies and something good is uncovered despite of the tragedy. Yes, people die and it's sad and you feel you feel pain and you, you know you lose loved ones. It's painful, but God, amen, when he uncovers some things and allows some things to happen, you on the other side of that you see revival, you see families back together, you see more people trusting in the Lord, amen. 911, perfect example, right? I never would in my whole life think that the Empire State Building that I was so used to looking at since I was a kid all the way till I was a, a full grown man will be knocked down. Amen. Um, but that year in the United States, you could check the stats for yourself. That year, more people were going into churches, more people were now challenged with their faith. And they wanted to know, understand why something so horrible would happen. They were going to God more than ever in our nation during that tragedy. And of course, because the world system has a way of, you know, redefining stuff and desensitizing us. Amen. A lot of people just left after they found some answers to their life's questions, you know, life questions that were answered and people were unified. The churches were coming together like no other time. Amen. And then it was back to normal. As soon as all the smoke cleared, literally, when the smoke cleared in that area, uh, people started leaving and doing their own thing again because now they found um, some kind of safety um, outside of, you know, God. But God will cover you and completely protect you. Amen. So there's no, no problem with that. He wants to fulfill his promises in your life. If you could understand that, amen, and you could understand the covering of God over your life and over my life, you can understand that his word is true, then you will have no problem believing that whatever you're facing right now, that God has you covered. And a lot of times, all you have to do, amen, is go to the word of God, see his promise over your life, and activate that promise. Believe it. If God promised you something dealing with your household, something dealing with your family, something dealing with your health, amen, prepare to receive it. That's all I'm saying, amen. If you got a bad um, a bad report from the doctor and you know you see it, get a second, third opinion, you have to do that. I suggest you do that. And it seems like there's no way out. You have a God that everything that we say is impossible to him, it's possible. And it's his will for us to live, not die. It's his will for us to be healthy, not unhealthy. But when the things turn a different way, like I said, we don't always understand the way God does a thing. But it's for a greater hope and greater glory for someone else. Maybe our purpose and our promises were fulfilled. We didn't even know it. Amen. And now someone else is coming up in the ranks. 
or in our family, somebody young that needs to see the faith of a person who's suffering, or brother and sister in Christ who's suffering, amen, that can lift somebody else up by our response. Because if we know the promises of God, we know that God got us covered, we know that he protects us, amen, uh, we shouldn't be worrying a lot. We shouldn't be worrying like the world worries when they get bad news. We should be trusting and believing in God. And although bad things will happen, and it's bad when they happen, we could trust in a God who's always good. He, we know that the pain and all that stuff might not always be come from God. Sometimes it does come from God. Apostle Paul had a thorn, a messenger of Satan, uh, or a thorn in his flesh. Amen. And God allowed it. And sometimes God will allow some things in my life. I'd be like, why would you allow that? And then instead of asking, why me? I always start saying, what what, what do you want to show me, Lord? Because I know he's a good God. He's not out there, you know, shooting darts at me or trying to shame me or trying to, you know, poison my thoughts. No, God is trying to elevate me. God is trying to fulfill his promises and will through my life. But sometimes I'm hard-headed. God wants me to go in that direction. Sometimes I say, no, I'm good. I'll go this direction. It happens with a lot of people. Amen. I'm not alone in that. So take a few minutes right now, today. Amen. In your time, in your devotion, in your prayer life, take a few minutes to ask God for protection. Listen, in every area of your life. Oh, that sounds selfish. No, it's not selfish. We already read Psalm what, 91 verse number four around there. He says he's going to protect us in everything. Amen. So we're just agreeing with what God already has said. So in your time of prayer, ask God for protection in every area of your life, your thought life. Right, your physical body, um, wherever you go, traveling mercies, everything. Ask God to protect you in every area of your life. So, because I don't know what you're going through, so I don't know what area of your life right now that you need God's covering, His protection. But I pray the covering and the protection of God according to His Word over your life in the powerful name of Jesus, and that you would testify that even though there was no way out, God released you, or you found the way through His Word. Um, through his angels that he sent and dispatched right now and you found the way out and you testify that tell people that it was God let them put let the world know that God still protects and guides and guards God is in control ask for protection over your life and God will be there as the protector that he is so I hope you got something out of here out of this morning devil I hope you believe and trust in his word read Psalm 91 the whole chapter read Proverbs chapter 30 what was it 30 verse Verse 5, or read the whole chapter of Proverbs 30 for yourself and realize whose you are, amen, and who the enemy can touch because we belong to the Lord. Amen. So I'm out of here. I'm out of time. God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.